Hey Ross World, my money makes money. We really don't think about it much. And because at best, it's morbid. It's something that we really don't want to think about. We really don't want to go over. But it's the most important thing in your life. Get your affairs in order. Get your affairs in order. And what I'm talking about, excuse me as I look down, but this, these are the things that I'm referring to. A trust. We talked about KISS trust, all right? That trust that is affordable for everyone, not just the filthy rich, not just the wealthy, but you and I. And what I like about the KISS trust, it has a basic plan, a basic plan plus, it has a deluxe plan, and it has a premium plan. So go over to KISStrust.com and check out what I'm talking about so you can set up a trust or in addition to a will or just a trust or just a will. Now, if you're doing a will, a lot of times you can just print off a will. You can go to like LegalZoom.com and print out a will format, fill it out, go to your bank and get a free notary stamp. Now, this is the thing. Let me go over some, some things so you can think about when I say get your affairs in order because maybe you don't know everything that you have. Here we go. A trust, a will, life insurance. Don't forget a lot of life insurances, you can also invest just like a trust, you have the option to invest. So really, really, really research these things. We have annuities. We talked about annuities. You saw the video on annuities. What if you have an annuity? Make sure that's in your trust. Make sure that's in your will. Stocks, bonds, property, a house, car, boat, a four-wheeler, etc. What about your liquid cash? What about cash in your savings account? your money market savings account, your checking account, your IRA, your 401k, and before I forget, a shout out goes out to Todd. He brought this up, he's talking about get your affairs in order, people, because we have all of these assets. It doesn't mean that it has to be $100,000. Maybe it's $25,000, maybe it's $10,000, but don't forget, if you don't make a life insurance, if you don't make a will, and you don't have life insurance, who are you leaving behind? Who are you leaving behind to take care of all of your bills? So let's think about this. What's the big difference between a trust and a will? So with a trust, the main thing I want you to think about is not only the investments, right? Because you have those investment options, especially through KISS. And my disclosure is, my disclaimer is that Kids don't pay me. They don't even know I'm mentioning their name. I just know I've done my research and they are the best in my opinion. Wheels can get caught up in probate. Okay, they can get caught up in probate. What is probate? In court. Say for instance, you leave your car, you leave your house to your oldest or your youngest daughter or son. Okay, or maybe your aunt or your uncle, whoever. But another family member want to contest that and say, no, that's wrong. They can actually get a lawyer and fight for that house, fight for that car, fight for that boat, whatever it may be. It will get caught up in probate. It can get tied in whoever you um, designated to receive that property or that money or those stocks or those bonds or whatever it may be, they may not even get it because wheels can get caught up in probate. Someone can contest your will. You're dead. You don't have no more power. You're done. Okay? You're like, well, I did, a, I did this, that, and the other. They can actually contest and say, hey, Todd wasn't in his right state of mind. He wasn't in the right state of mind. Look, he went to the hospital uh, uh, for mental condition. He had dementia. He actually told me whenever. Okay? But when you do a trust, now a trust can be tricky because Trust, you can actually designate property, you can designate money, you can designate stocks and bonds right now. You can say when this person reaches 25, when this person reaches 35, they can have this. And this is the thing, once you do this, they call it irrevocable. You can't take it back. Oh, you can't change your mind because you said, hey, I'm gonna die around 70, but I'm actually around to 90. Guess what? If you put your house in an irrevocable trust, irrevocable, I-R-R, vocable trust, you know, I'm still trying to pronounce some of these words, is that once you said it, you might as well forget it because now 
Todd has your house. Yeah, he has your house. Tyrone has your house because you thought, hey, I'm not going to need this. And what? And guess what? If it's their house, they can put you out. Life insurance. Let's jump right into it. Life insurance. Is life insurance a good idea? It just depends on what type of life insurance you get. I always think about the profitability of life insurance because you can get a life insurance right now while you're healthy. Now, if Congress don't revoke or uh, uh, take back or the legislation of all this political talk about killing the Affordable Health Care Act, do it now before they do because pre-existing um, pre conditions, they can't even use that to disqualify you. So go ahead and get life insurance and make sure you have stocks and bonds, okay? These are very imperative, okay? Now, life insurance you pay for, a, a trust you pay for, but a will, it can be free because you can do it yourself and you can sign it and you can get it notarized with a witness at your local bank. Now, depending if it's not your bank, you might have to pay a nominal fee, maybe five or 10 bucks, but if it's your bank, nine times out of 10, it's gonna be absolutely free. Now, this is important, excuse me, this is important. Who do you leave the paperwork with? Who do you, do you leave the digital trace with? Okay, how can someone track down what you put in order once you're gone? This is important. With a trust, you have an organization, you have a company, you have a business that will take care of your affairs and your untimely demise. And the people in your corner, your family members, your friends, whoever you left anything to can just contact that particular trust agency. Or you or and or you will leave all the information for those people to the organization and they will contact them. Both simultaneously can work. But when you do a will, this is the issue. Usually, most times a will is kept in the home. It's kept in a safety deposit box, right? And so you usually have to pay a lawyer or a bank or, or, or a, a secret entity, a person to contact the family so they know where the will is. And sometimes people, when they know they're on their deathbed, they actually tell, hey, my will is in the safe in my room behind the wall wherever it may be. You don't have, usually you don't have an organization. You usually have a person, a lawyer, someone trustworthy. It just depends. You have to pick somebody or pick an organization or even a lawyer or, or a lawyer agency, okay, in order to get that will out. So this is just simply telling you, you're going to die. You can't get around it. People say the most guaranteed things in life is what? Death and taxes. Well, death is definitely certain, and we know some people don't pay their taxes. I do. That's not here nor there, and I'm off of it. But Ross World, we have to understand this is not a comfortable conversation. It's not comfortable. Who wants to think about death? But right now, every day, you're going out into the workplace, okay? You're traveling across seas or nationwide. You're going to all these places. You're not just staying in your home. And quite frankly, if you stay in your home, that doesn't guarantee you're not going to die anytime soon. You can die at any moment. You have to be ready for death. Who's going to pay your, uh, your death fees? Like your burial fees? Who's going to pay for the hearse? You have to understand, when you leave this earth, you leave your debt, you leave all these fees that are associated with you dying if you don't take care of them while you're living because you don't want to put anyone in a financial hardship. You don't. You want people to be in a position where, quite frankly, they profit from your death. I know that's messed up, right? Because usually it's our kids. Usually it's an aunt or an uncle or a great friend who helped us out continuously through life. And you want to set them up to success in your timely demise, untimely demise. So it's imperative that you do these things now, okay? Now, now granted, we have busy lives. We always have things to do. You schedule a trip. This is what I want you to do. If you can do it today, do it today. If, you, if it has to wait to the weekend, but do it as soon as possible. 
Now, other things take time and money. But here's the challenge. Go on LegalZoom or Google search a will. Download the format. Do the will. Take a witness with you. Or they may even have a witness at the bank. And at least do a will and get it notarized and make copies of it. And hold it somewhere and tell somebody that you trust until you can set up life insurance if you don't have it. I know a lot of you do. And if you don't have a trust, because I believe that the trust is better, but like I said, you pay a monthly fee depending on what plan you have with that trust agency. This is Ross World. I didn't mean to talk a hole in your head, but I did. <laughs> Think about your affairs. Think about when you leave this earth and leave this earth and those people that you love in a better position than when you were alive. I'm out.